you. Look at my Galentine's Day. I know. Huh? I love this. What are you wearing? You know, don't you love the burnt orange? I do. I love it. We're sort of matching a little bit. Kind of in like yeah. a burnt burgundy brownish something. Yes. Wow. Oh, look at us. We're like <laughs> admiring each other's outfits. Yes. <laughs> well, we should say hello, hello, and welcome to everybody for joining. Welcome. Welcome and for joining our Galentine's Day tasting of Black Girl Magic by the yes. So, 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 what should we start off with, Sissy? Actually, maybe start with people might not know who we are. So maybe. That's true. That's true. <laughs> we shouldn't make that assumption. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about McBride Sisters, our company, McBride Sisters Collection that actually produces uh, the Black Girl Magic line of wines. Yeah, that sounds like a good start. Off so who go. are we? So <laughs> you and I, Robin McBride, Andrea McBride, McBride John, <laughs> um, we founded uh, McBride Sisters Collection. We're the owners. McBride Sisters Collection is now the largest black owned wine company in the world in the world <laughs> so and, um, we think, and we think maybe we have to still qualify it but i think we m now might be the largest woman-owned winery in the united states i heard that rumor i yes. heard that we're we're either at the top or we're nearing the top yes, right yes, yes yes and what do we do we produce wines in the central coast of california and in new zealand which has a lot to do with your accent, but I think we'll get to that a, a, a little bit later. And my accent, I suppose, depending on, on where you're listening from. Yes, yes, yes. And then today, um, but before we get into explaining why one of us has an accent and the other one doesn't, maybe perhaps let's talk about the wines we're tasting today, which behind your beautiful background and your beautiful background, you have... Black Girl Magic by the McBride Sisters, which is what we will be tasting today. And you can, I love the very sort of floral, you know, arrangement you have going on in the background. <laughs> it feels very on vibe for Galentine's. Very Valentine's slash Galentine's Day, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, and maybe we talk a little bit about those wines. So we're going to be tasting the uh, McBride Sisters Black Girl Magic, uh oh, the, the background. It's disappearing. It is disappearing. Black Girl Magic, sparkling fruit. Oh, these virtual backgrounds do not like that. <laughs> Blanc de Blanc. So yes. So sparkling white from New Zealand. And then we have the Black Girl Magic Rose from the central coast of California. Yum, yum, yummy. yummy. And then yummy. we have our Black Girl Magic Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon Red Blend from the Central Coast of California. Virtual background isn't super loving <laughs> it, but you guys get the idea. Um, and perhaps we will start let's with start, Let's start with the sparkling. Okay. All um, right. I'm going to pour myself a little bit. I think okay. you've already got some. And, um, I, yeah, you know, I was warming up before we got on camera. So, yeah. I, I understand. I'm not mad at all. <laughs> I appreciate it, actually. Um, but, yes, let's start with the sparkling brut. And then maybe should we talk a little bit about... The collection? Well, no, wait, no, we can't. We can't talk about the collection without talking about McBride Sisters. That's true. Yeah. So, oh, I, I see. Of course, you have. So, Robin and I, we differ on our stemware. I'm gonna do like a little bit of a top up. Robin, with her sparkling wine, champagne, prosecco, cava, she prefers a traditional flute. Whereas I can't. I don't know if. You, oh, this guy is like. Put it in front of you. Oh there yeah. You there we go. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So I am team flute. Yes, and I am team coupe or coupe, depending on how you want to pronounce it. How do you? How do we? How do we think we pronounce it? Coupe. I okay. think it's coupe. Um, 
Well, before we get uh, started into telling our stories, little cheers, Sissy. Happy Galentine's Day. Cheers and happy Galentine's Day. Yes, clearly we dress up for each other. Whenever we can. Yes. So tell me, so this one is from New Zealand, so I'll let you talk about it. Tell us everything that you want us to know. Um, well, no, 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 let's talk about our story first, and then we'll talk about the wine. Okay. All right. Okay. Or am I being too bossy like normal? <laughs> it could be a little bit of that, but we can talk, we can talk and sip. We can talk about anything we want, right? Mm -hmm. So we can talk about our story. We can talk about McBride's sisters, which our relationship as sisters is just about 20 years old now, right? It is, yes. So for our folks that haven't heard our story, we have a little bit of a, a unique story, particularly for how wine companies get started. Um, we actually didn't know about each other at all as we were growing up. And I'll say out loud, I'm the first sister, not the oldest, but the one that was born first, right? So nine years before your birth, um, I arrived on the planet and we share we share a very special character which is our father right we have different different moms we have mom 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 and mums um, but we have the same father and because he was just so uh, unique and wild in the world um, which is this is a much longer story but ultimately neither of us um, grew up having a relationship with him right and so we were both born in Los Angeles, but I was moved by my mother up to Monterey, California when I was still a baby. And a few years later, you were born to your yes. mom yes. back in Los Angeles. Um, and I had no idea. So we didn't have contact with our dad. So I didn't know that um, I had a little sister, a little bouncing baby sister that was born back in LA. And for you, since you're about to take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my mom was originally from New Zealand, as Robin mentioned. And, um, you know, uh, our dad, the character, um, was still that character. And Robin's, Robin's mom, you know, had enough of him. And my mom had had enough of him. And so um, my mom and our dad separated. And unfortunately, she was diagnosed with a terminal illness and and the age of six she took me back down to her home com country of New Zealand so I moved from LA to uh, New Zealand to Blenheim to Marlborough which is our largest grape growing region in New Zealand and shortly thereafter she would pass away and um, in, uh, I lost uh, communication with our dad so um, and he hadn't disclosed anything about Robin <laughs> So um, we were literally growing up on completely opposite sides of the world. I was at the bottom of the Southern Hemisphere in New Zealand. Robin was in the Northern Hemisphere in Monterey in California. And it wasn't until um, our dad was able to find us later in life and, and um, get in touch with me first at the time I was 16 um, and um, tell me that I had this big sister named Robin McBride. And unfortunately, he was... Uh, also to had a terminal illness and it was his last wish to find and connect his two daughters so uh, his family our family found me first and then found Robin um, in the United States and we were united and we were connected for the first time in 1999 and on top of the crazy amazing experience <laughs> that you go through meeting a sibling um, for the first time um, after the shock and the awe and the tears and the hugging and the crying the natural first question that came up was what was it like where you grew up and really quickly we figured out that we both grew up in these small agricultural world-class winemaking regions and independently of each other we wanted to be winemakers and so when we met I was 16 uh, Robin was 25 and I came back, I had to go back to New Zealand because we met in the US. I had to go back to New Zealand, graduate high school, came back to the US for college and we together hatched this huge audacious dream <laughs> <laughs> that one day we were going to create our own winery and um, we had two fundamental problems. We didn't know how to make wine 
and we had no money and we are the very pure true sense of wine entrepreneurs <laughs> and you know nearly 15 now 16 years going on later uh, as Robert mentioned we're now the largest black owned um, wine company in the world and quite possibly pretty soon the largest woman owned winery in the United States um, and it has been a journey <laughs> but, quite a journey. but in the very beginning, the thing that we um, recognized was we had the opportunity to do, to do something really special and different that nobody else in the world of wine can do. And that is authentically uh, make wine in two different hemispheres, two different countries. We can sustainably farm. And basically, you know, if on Monday night you want to have a glass of delicious Black Girl Magic Blanc de Blanc from New Zealand, you can have that with McBride Sisters. And then on Tuesday night, uh, we can take you back from New Zealand, back to the central coast of California for a delicious Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon Red Blend. Um, most wine companies, you know, they are, uh, their story is tied to one country, one region, one place. At McBride Sisters, we can take you all over the world and we can give you different flavors and tastes um, that no one else can. And the other big thing for us was we felt like the wine industry could be way more inclusive uh, and that the, the wine industry could bring a lot more people in um, and make them feel good about their wine experience and their journey. So in McBride Sisters, we're all about transforming the, the industry, leading by example and cultivating community like you all. <laughs> on this on this Valentine's Day with us, one delicious glass of wine at a time on the bench. So long winded, clearly I'm a long winded kiwi sister, <laughs> but we're going to get to the tasting of the wine. So this is the this is our Blanc de Blanc. It comes from the North Island of New Zealand, a region called Hawke's Bay, which is known for delicious sparkling wines. Um, and this is primarily Chardonnay, and um, and then a little proprietary secret that we can't tell anybody about because that is the differentiator that gives us how beautiful baked pear, green apple, flavor profile. You get these lifted aromatics. And the signature of Mc, all McBride Sisters sparkling is the beautiful little bead bubble that you get in the glass. It has beautiful acidity and basically the acidity just wants you to keep on drinking keeps everything, you know, it keeps a freshness to the wine. So that's a good description of our... Which, which is a, a good segue into why I'm team flutes, because of that beautiful little bubble that persists longer in a nice, long, narrow glass. Whereas those of you who are on team coupe, granted, you might have a little bit more access to those beautiful aromatics, but your bubbles aren't going to last as long. And plus, for those of us that are clumsy, you can move this around a lot easier. You, you, <laughs> you, you coop folks have to be very careful how you see yes, yes, your sparkling. Yes. Yeah, we do. And so um, I guess we should explain um, a little bit about Black Girl Magic. So at McBride Sisters uh, Collection, we have our namesake collection of wines, which are two, two wines from New Zealand and two wines from the central coast of California. And then two years ago, we launched... Black Girl Magic by the McBride Sisters. And I have to say it was it was by accident, but it came from a very inspired and powerful place. And we were we were invited to Essence Festival. And that year there were a ton of black women that were accomplishing amazing things in all different industries and sectors. And Essence Festival is this culmination of black women that descend on New Orleans every year. And it was the first time New Orleans had um, a black woman mayor. And she hosts the opening party of Essence Festival. And we wanted to be able to kind of commemorate all the amazing things that were going on that year and also pay homage to the black women in our family. And so it just seemed fitting <laughs> that we you know, create this commemorative label called Black Girl Magic. And um, it's really just celebrating the, the beauty, the power, the resilience of women we know and we admire and we aspire to. And um, I'll say we've never had people react to our wine label <laughs> 
Like I they venture to say, I venture to say it's probably the only time that we've ever underestimated um, the popularity of something that we created. Right? We thought it would be for the occasion. We thought it would be something nice that commemorated Essence Festival. We can make a little bit. We made. We started with the riesling, right? The off-dry riesling. We make a little bit. It would be cute. It would be very special for the moment. But the demand was much greater than what we had produced, first of all, Mm -hmm. Um, much greater than what we had expected. And and we made some more and then we made it available online on our website. Um, And we still didn't make enough and (laughs) we made more and it still wasn't enough. Um, And then we added the rest of these wines to the collection over the next couple of years, the rosé and the red blends. Um, And quite honestly, it still wasn't enough and we couldn't even fulfill it on our website. We couldn't really manage those orders. And so we then made enough to go out into national distribution so that it could be um, across the country and close by folks in stores. And the specifically the Black Girl Magic range of wines, when we're looking at the fruit each harvest that comes from New Zealand, that comes from California, we're pulling off the very best grapes to go in to make that wine. Um, we like to think about it, you know, in a way in which we describe uh, exceptional wine for exceptional women. And also, too, I feel like we wanted to be able to loudly and proudly <laughs> let women in the Black community know that we're here to celebrate every single one of your milestones, you know, whether that's small, whether that's medium, big, however you define that. Um, you know, we just wanted to say, we see you, we want to celebrate you, um, and let's do it together and do it in a community, um, because we are contributing a lot to our great country and world. (laughs) So, um, that was the genesis of, of the brand and a little bit behind where the wine comes from. And then I think now, Robin, should we talk a little bit about your rosé? Sure. Let's, let's go from New Zealand back to California. So we have our Black Girl Magic Rosé, which is still rosé. It's a dry rosé from the central coast of California. And like you said, these um, are the best of the grapes that we pull for these wines, right? And so it's a, um, a predominantly Pinot Noir and Syrah blend. Um, from the Central Coast. And, you know, we always um, look to old world sort of style of winemaking and then translate that into McBride's style of wines, right? Which across any wine, sparkling still, red, white, rosé, we're always, we're always creating wines that have really beautiful aromatics, right? That before you even drink them, you can smell it coming out of the glass, like right into your nose. If there is one specific McBride sister style of wine, it's that. It's the beautiful aromatics, always perfumed, always feminine, always really pungent in a beautiful way. Um, And so this this wine is, again, it's dry, but has really beautiful notes of red fruits, of of strawberries, of raspberries, a lot of citrus in it. So it's it's got a beautiful vein of acidity because it's a cool climate wine. And the cooler the climate, the more acidity that you're going to have on there, which is going to lend to just have that nice structure. Sometimes rosés are just a little watery. They don't have a whole lot of flavor. This wine has both structure and a lot of fruit flavor. It's completely dry, so no, it's not sweet at all, no residual sugar, but has a lot of really beautiful fruit characteristics and comes from my backyard from the central coast of California. And so when we talk a little bit about our signature style, Robin just touched on that, you know, with McBride Sisters, it's always about lifted aromatics out of the glass, but you'll see maybe, you know, if you read our tasting notes, it'll say, you know, old, old world, old world finesse um, and, um, oh, sorry, old world style, new world finesse. It's new world finesse. <laughs> and the old world component of that is we like to farm as naturally, sustainably, as we possibly can, because we want to make sure that we um, hand this industry off in great shape um, for the next generation. 
Um, and for us, like sustainability is all about people and planet. And, and winemaking, truly, it takes a village of people to get this beautiful wine in the glass. And so you've got to take care of your community um, in order to, to be able to have it to be sustaining and, and sustainable. Um, and so we really look to the old world and old techniques in terms of farming and, and also to winemaking styles. And then, you know, the, world, the new world for us is, you know what I'm saying, we make things hot, you know, <laughs> you know, and so, you know, that's like the McBride sisters style, taste, flair. It's, it's seeing, it's seeing the wine world through our rosé colored glasses and that's doing great. it our way, which, which really lends to like our experience growing up, the culture that we're from, the cultures we've grown up in. Um, and it's just a, a fresh, different approach on wine. And combined with, new world finesse being um the expression of the fruit as well right so when you have new world which is anywhere outside of the old world which means anywhere outside of old europe um our fruit has a little bit is a little bit more expressive and has a little bit more of the fresh bright fruit characteristics and so our rosé um has just a little bit a little bit more of a, a kick. It has a little bit more oomph. It has a little more style, pizzazz, finesse, a little more weight, um, and really kind of talks to you about where it comes from and all of those beautiful red fruit characteristics. Look, me and Robin have this thing in which when it comes to our wine, you know, we want to be the best dressed in the room. You know what I'm saying? We're going to, when you get a, a bottle of McBride's wine, it's going to be beautiful. And then, you know, and then when you pop the cork or the screw, screw cap or whatever it might be and you open it up you know we're going to give you the most and that's just the way that we come that's right <laughs> so next robin should we talk about your central coast oh, so we have the red Union. yes red, red blend. blend so again central coast of california um which in this case specifically means um paso robles and monterey which is in, they are probably, I don't know, within a hundred, less than a hundred miles or so of each other. Monterey, of course, is where I grew up. Um, and this one being a cab from Paso and Merlot from Monterey. Again, Monterey is kind of cool climate. So, and when we talk about cool climate um, with reds or with whites, so particularly in the reds, we're talking about um, a cooler, longer growing season for the grapes. And so our wines in that sort of old world style, you don't have really um, overly extracted, overly jammy, overly oaked, all of those really big flavors that a lot of times California wines can be associated with, particularly um, cabs or cab blends. What we're really trying to do is to express the beauty that's in the grapes themselves. And that expression comes from where and how they're grown. So we don't want to cover that up with a, a we don't want to have too much alcohol. We don't want to have a whole bunch of really oaky, big, heavy flavors. We really want you to be able to get a sense of the place and to experience the Central Coast, be able to experience the quality of the fruit and all of the characteristics that it expresses. So with that being said, and this is about, a, a I can't think we kind of go back and forth on this, a medium bodied red wine, right? Can we agree on that? I would say medium plus. I'd say medium plus. Medium-ish, medium plus, right? So it's got from the um, the Cabernet, it's got just really uh, smooth sort of round tannins um, and has really great structure, um, which helps, I think, maybe is where your medium plus comes from a little bit. Um, and then, of course, the Merlot was one of our very favorite grapes, one of our favorite red, red grapes, for sure. And so with the combination, you've got this... Um, You've got some really great structure. You've got really great acidity. And then you have this sort of span of just really amazing dark and red fruits. You've got blackberries. You've got blueberries. You've got raspberries. And then with just a little bit of the neutral oak treatment that we used on this, that the wines were aged in, it adds complexity and layers. There's just a little bit of like baking spice, a little bit of cocoa powder, um, a little bit of just you know, of, of complexity that for me, I always call this our blackberry cobbler, but for me kind of makes it feel 
like a little bit of a berry dessert. Why would you, when you were describing that, I was like, oh, yes. And I was like, Ooh, like yes. Wine tastes like. <laughs> yes. yes. Of course, not a sweet, this is not a sweet wine, but the, the way that the fruit um, expresses along with that complexity and those layers of flavors is really reminiscent of just like a beautiful blackberry cobbler. I can't think of a better terminology for it. Yeah, for sure. One of our favorite wines, for sure. So let's talk a little bit about why we celebrate Galentine's Day. Should we? We shall. I mean, we're dressed for it, right? So. <laughs> so I think for Rob and I, like, you know, we kind of have this attitude, you know, it doesn't matter if you have like a special he, she, they in your life. You know, we love Galentine's Day because, you know, we love celebrating each other. You know, we, we love celebrating, you know, our other, the other special women in our lives. And it's a reason to get dressed up and get together and have fun and drink good wine. And um, I mean, it's pretty simple. I don't know. I don't we know. Love, how we love just... celebrating love, right? Like yeah. we really look for, you know, every opportunity to show each other and those in our lives love and gratitude. And if we can find a really good reason to celebrate over wine, <laughs> yes. get dressed a little bit, yes. um, which is what makes us like, uh, one of our favorite holidays. And so the last thing I think we should talk about before we go is McBride certified. And so yes. Robin and I, we talked about, you know, at the very beginning where we want to build a big wine community. We want to we want people to feel welcome and empowered in the wine experience. And the thing that we've realized is we kind of keep, hearing the same thing over and over and it hasn't changed in 15 years and people will say I love wine I don't know where to start it's intimidating like where do I go um and so finally one of the positive things that came out of 2020 was Rob and I were like everybody else sheltering in place um in one place and it gave us the opportunity to do something that we wanted to do for a long time and that's be able to create um a really fun we like to call it edutainment where it's, you know, you're getting education on wine, but it's also entertaining and combining some of um, the best books that we love, um, our haunt haunting passion of wine, <laughs> the <laughs> studies that we personally do ourselves and creating a curriculum um, and a study guide. And we're just really big believers in the nine styles of wine. We believe if you understand these nine styles that you understand the wine world as a whole and the thousands of wines that are out there and you'll be empowered on your own personal journey to um to feel good to taste to go um buy in the supermarket i know you guys walk into that sea of wines and you're just like what am i supposed to do you know when you're at a restaurant and somebody passes you like the wine list not feeling intimidated to be able to to, to order wine for like a group of people. Um, so we created McBride Certified Wine 101. Uh, go to our Facebook fan page, it's McBride Sisters. You can join the group. It's absolutely free. Um, that was on purpose. We will tell you that if you try and do, if you look around at wine education anywhere else, it's really expensive, you know? So um, you take time advantage. Consuming. Yeah, so take, <laughs> advantage of, take advantage of it. And the community, the people that are, that are in there, it's so much fun um, and we want to extend this to you as well. And in closing, I think we want to say thank you to the Total Wine and More family for allowing us to host on this Galentine's Day during Black History Month. Black Girl Magic by the McBride Sisters is for everybody to enjoy. It was The naming was inspired by family lineage, personal experiences, community, but it's to be enjoyed by everybody. Everyone, um, everywhere. And, Yes, and we want to say cheers uh, and thank you. And here's to a fantastic 2021. Cheers. Happy thank Galentine's you. Day, Sissy. Thank you for joining me, Sissy. <laughs> oh, I love that dress. You're going to have to like, give that to me. Girl, where did you find out where I got it from? What size is it? Medium. Medium. I think I can squeeze that on. <laughs> it's, it's stretchy. Oh, even better. Yeah, it was one of those um, one-click Instagram purchases. Oh, really? You know, you know them ones. You're like, mm -hmm. eh. 
eh, why not take a risk? It was meant to be my, my date night dress, but you know, I have no date nights right now. So I was like, Valentine's Day, this is our date night. Yes. <laughs> let me, let me end this. Okay. Okay.